Hey Gainesville, Cox Cable wants to thank you for watching. So we're giving away a trip anywhere in the continental United States. All you have to do is stop by the bike route, carpet brokers, specs music, or the hair interface, and pick up a Cable Watcher bumper sticker. If we spot your sticker, you'll win one of our daily prizes and a chance to win the grand prize, an all-expense-paid trip anywhere in the continental USA. So pick up your bumper sticker at the bike route, carpet brokers, specs music, or the hair interface. Keep watching and keep winning. When you need immediate care, get immediate care at the Immediate Care Center, conveniently located on Newberry Road at 57th Street. The doctors and nurses there will take care of you fast and send you on your way for less money than you might expect. The Immediate Care Center accepts major credit cards, too. The Immediate Care Center is open every day, 8 to 8, Newberry Road at 57th. And it's a service of North Florida Regional Medical Center. When you need immediate care, get it at the Immediate Care Center. Every game of the year, they've won seven in a row since losing their opening two. This is going to be a matchup of different offenses. The Wildcats, they only throw the ball about six, seven times a game. they got two outstanding running backs. Well, Buell's is primarily a running team as well, but the big difference, quarterback Clint Alexander thrown for over 1,500 yards and 16 touchdowns. So that Wildcat defense could have its hands full tonight with Alexander, Lamar Thomas, and Johnny Dickerson and those folks. Here are the Washington Wildcats. The big difference in these teams, Kent, is the quarterback position. Clint Alexander with a load of experience. They've got a young man, a junior by the name of Ben Howes, who uh, is an adequate quarterback, good field general, but this does not have the tools that Clint Alexander has. The Buell's defense will look to exploit this Wildcat, the Buell's offense will look to exploit this Wildcat defense, which plays a basic front, 4-3, sometimes a little 5-2, but they do blitz the linebackers an awful lot, and Coach Warnicke thinks that they can find some soft spots in that defense over the middle, and of course it's going to be the execution of the quarterback, and that's means the ball is in that's Clint Alexander's right. hands to lead this team on in district competition through this championship game tonight. And offensively, the Wildcats run the wishbone and uh, didn't take the Bobcats too long to figure out Merritt Island's wishbone, which is probably about the best in the state. And with Buholtz's defense giving up under two yards of pop, if the Wildcats can't run the ball tonight, they may be dead before this thing gets, gets cranked up. Well, it's going to be like the uh, immovable force, meaning the irresistible object. Buholtz's defense only allowing 128 yards per game and you know you got a couple of kids on their team that have one has rushed for 850 yards the other one's rushed for 600 so this is going to be a very very interesting matchup in this ball game i look for a low scoring game a very quick ball game both these teams will keep it on the ground and establish that running game in the early going and then we'll see how the second half progresses if one of these teams because of the way the score dictates things if they have to go to the air a lot more in the second half you see john covert and rodney young the captains for the beholds by Cats as we see the coin toss. The Cats have won the toss and they've waved off the option to the second half. The captains for the Wildcats, number seven, Greg Golovka, very interesting young man who is their place kicker. He is a rush of Russian descent. There he is, number seven, the blonde youngster right there, along with number 62, Chris Truitt. So those are the captains. And you see that Washington has won the toss and they have elected to receive, and Buells will defend the North goal. Team shaking hands. The referee right there is Benny Bauman. He will be working with umpire Frank Rule, head linesman Gene Descanio, the field judge is Lou Fisher, back judge Al Sherman, clock operator Tom Hinson, and as is the policy of the Florida High School Activities Association, the officials in these sectional and regional games come from out of the district. So these are from the Central Florida Officials Association out of Orlando. So Robert McCarthy will be kicking things off for the Bobcats as you look at Al Warnicke and his prize pupil, Clint Alexander. A little more pressure, I believe, on Buell's to perform here tonight, Ken. This is a home for seniors. And you know, when you go into this, this type of competition where it's literally the seniors start to get that feeling, hey, this could be my last game. So they really feel it. They really want it. And the seniors feeling a lot of pressure right now. Cats, of course, come in nine and one. They're only lost to, at the time, number one ranked Merritt Island. Washington is seven and three.
Chris Tolbert are deep for Washington. They're the two halfbacks for the Wildcats. We're underway from, from Florida field, and this is Chris Tolbert. Tolbert's out to about the 19-yard line. <laughs> Wrapped up in a hurry by Kevin Peoples. Tolbert, down there in a hurry. Tolbert put a nice move on Dale Warren, Warren, who was the first man down on defense. Nice kick by McCarthy, but he's benefiting from a very, very stiff wind blowing here at Florida Field. And he kicked that one all the way down to the two-yard line. So from about the 20-yard line, here come the Wildcats with a record of 8-2. and 7-3, and three, but they do get the win on a benefit of a uh, forfeit over Pensacola. Give it to Eddie Riley on first down. Riley gets across the 20 to about the 21, and that's about it. Again, as Ken said a little bit ago, they run the wishbone. Uh, they prefer to call it the power eye. We've seen that numerous times this season. A lot of teams employ that type of offense. They line up with a tailback and a fullback and a power back off to the side. The tailback is number 20, Eddie Riley. The, the power back is Chris Tolbert. That's their leading ground gainer. 883 yards on 173 carries and 12 touchdowns. He wears 24. And on second and nine, Riley gets the call. You all well, linebackers, Ken, knowing that this is a running team, are really stacking up that defensive front. You also play that 4-4 with the four linebackers, but they're really going to be playing hard up against the run. So we don't expect too many passes tonight, and we're going to see if Buells is just going to stop them from establishing their running game and force them to go to the pass, which is something the Wildcats don't want to do. So we see our first third down situation, third and five. The Wildcats and Howes gives off inside to Riley again. Riley will be stacked up to the 7-yard line, and the Cats will have to punt on their first offensive possession. Two sets of Cats going on, Wildcats and Bobcats, so don't be confused. Todd Harrison, with really good penetration at the point of attack, took out two blockers of Pensacola and just snuffed that play at the line of scrimmage. And the New York's defense does what it wants to do, gives up only about five or six yards in the opening series, and they're forced to punt. And again, this is the Russian, Golovka, except back to punt. Golovka gets a foot into it. Lamar Thomas coming up for it, drops the ball. It's loose, and Washington has recovered at the 25-yard line, Doug Mitchell. Balls in the ball. Doug Mitchell, a wide receiver with great speed. Up that field, Lamar Thomas made two mistakes. He was coming up, and he took his eye off the ball with that win. It just takes a little bit of a discrepancy from where you saw it and where it lands. And he took his eyes off it, looking where the, the men were coming at him to try to make his move. And then when the ball bounced back, he didn't dive on it. He looked to try to pick it up. So the error on Lamar Thomas, he doesn't feel too good right now. First big break of the ball game. 9.42 to play first quarter. No score. And the Wildcats jumped. 73, Derek Warren, the left tackle, started a little early. This is a very young offensive team, Ken. Uh, Warren, number 73, is only a junior. Most of these people on offense are juniors. We mentioned the quarterback is a junior. The leader offensively is the senior, Chris Tolbert, who has the 12 touchdowns. He's a senior, number 24, the power back. Who, well, by incidentally, plays both ways. Center back five yards on the procedure penalty. First and 15 from the 30. Riley sweeping right. Brought down at about the 26-yard line. Kevin Peoples was in there. Along with Sebron McCray. Good run by Riley, but good blocking up front. They pull a couple of guards. They send that. The two men in the backfield out blocking. Todd Harrison was taken out of the play. Looks like the old Green Bay Packer power sweep and said, here we come and see if he can stop us. They look to create a seam in the defense and let that back with the ball try to pick his hole. Back's in the eye now on the option left. Well, this is Dean House. House carries. Sim Banks on the tackle. Sim Banks, a very rangy linebacker, spends a lot of his time in the opponent's offensive backfield, made the tackle. Drink to the running back that time, pulling Singh backs along for a couple of extra yards. So another third down, third and eight now from the 23. Clock running 8.26 to play first quarter. After a fumble punt by Lamar Thomas of Buholtz, Washington in striking distance in this Region 1 championship game. And Eddie Riley.
Riley is going nowhere. Most of black shirts there to greet him, led by Sim Banks along with Rodney Young. Ewald's defense, tough to run against, and against a running team makes for the most interesting matchup you're going to want to see anytime. And uh, again, with the turnover, Pensacola, Washington, with a golden opportunity to, to get off early here at Florida Field. 7.45 remaining in the first quarter, no score. Greg Golovka will attempt a 39-yard field goal. He's made all seven of his field goal attempts this year. He's been perfect. And the young man of Soviet descent misses this one. Golovka's 39-yard field goal attempt will be his first miss all year. Well, Ken, an interesting thing. This is uh, the second time in three days we've seen this happen. Of course, on Wednesday here at Florida Field in the Pensacola Scambia game, they came in with a field goal kicker who had made all nine of his field goals, and he missed his first attempt. So Golovka suffers the same fate as the other Pensacola kicker did and misses his first of the season here at Florida Field. It is a little bit different kicking off the AstroTurf, but shouldn't be that much for that tough of a coincidence. It is a windy night as well. And on first down, John Algani gets a call wrapped up in his own backfield. Chris Tolbert, we told you he plays both ways. Halfback, he was in there to make the tackle on that one. And as I'm sure you can hear in the background, these Pensacola people we told you a couple of days ago take their football seriously. And the Wildcats have brought a huge contingent on the far side of the field. Not too often that we see those East stands filled with people. Keith Howell is the fullback, Clint Alexander the quarterback. Lamar Thomas and John McLean now the wideouts. Alexander to throw, hits McLean over the middle on a short pass at the 28-yard line, but they're going to call it incomplete. He dropped the ball. Washington was hoping they'd get a fumble out of it, but it's no go. Just an incomplete pass. Bring up third and 11. Really a hard hit that time. Headlinesman Gabe Descasio right on the side there, waited, saw the ball, and would have thought about it for a second, but said no. It was a clean separation, and McLean dropped it. And I'll tell you what, Mulchie, but some hit that time. That's why their defense uh, shut out Panama City Mosley last week. They're really coming on defensively. Cats now third and long, and Alexander will throw. Looking for Johnny Dickerson, and it's picked off. Take it in for a touchdown by Greg Grandison. 29 yards down the sideline. Well, Clint Alexander let that one go, and he threw it in the vicinity of probably the best athlete in Pensacola, Washington's team, Greg Grandison, who's a junior defensive back, but also there's a split end and the fastest player on the team, best athlete on the squad, Greg Grandison. He has caught the one touchdown pass that their quarterback, O'Howes, has thrown this year, and now he picks up the second of the year on that interception. So Golovka will try the point after. He's made all 17 of his point after attempts this year. Make it 18. Wildcats of Pensacola, Washington lead you hold 7 0. At Gator Surplus and Hardware, we've got a fantastic selection of hardware. But that's not all. We've got outerwear. Like khaki and tan. And a Rambo man. A suit for the flight. Or to stand out at night. Tree bark camo. Relax, no ammo. Hard hats, work boots. All out rain suits. Clothes if you're cold. Clothes if you're bold. Gear if you're lazy. Gear if you're crazy. Cover for wet skies. Cover for small guys. If you need it now. We'll show you how. Gator Surplus and Hardware, Northwest 23rd Avenue, across from Kmart. Regency Mazda Peugeot is rounding up for our customers the very best deals. With all the tax laws changing, you'll never find a better time to trade than right now. Regency Mazda Peugeot is offering you the very lowest drive-out price. For example, you can drive a beautiful 1987 RX-7 for only 218 per month. The all-new 323 wagon for only 159 per month. Where else can you find better deals? Nowhere but Regency Mazda Peugeot in Gainesville, where we want to earn your business. This is Jimmy Norman at his own goal line. Check out John Algani. Gain to the outside, breaks it, and he gets to the 30-yard line. Gain on return before John Wallace brings him down there. Ken, I don't expect to see too many more turnovers in this game. These teams are too well seasoned. They've faced too many good teams this year. I'll tell you what, these two teams we're watching tonight probably have played two of the, the top five schedules in the state of Florida. There are not many patsies on either schedule. Maybe one on the Pensacola uh, Washington schedule when they played in uh, Panama City Rutherford, but that's about it. Everybody else is tough team 
And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Keith Howell, the fullback, gets the call on first down. Keith Howell, and he's out to about the 33, 34 yard line. You figure this team, uh, we talk about how they came into their own uh, towards the end of the season. They lost their opening two games. They were defeated by Pensacola High 7-3. We know that Pensacola knocked off Escambia. Then they lost Escambia 35-0. Emmett Smith ran wild in that game. Then everything's been downhill. Seven straight wins coming in. And on second down, Alexander to throw. Looks like he and Johnny Dickerson got crossed up as to the pattern of that play. And Alex overthrows him, and it's well, third they, down. They'd be wise to stay away from Greg Grandison, number 27 on defense, and that's who they were throwing at again. He plays that one side of the field. He'll be marking Dickerson all game long. Here you see Dickerson, one of the best athletes on the Behold squad, also the punter. Third and seven now from the 33-yard line of Buholtz. On the draw play, John Alganey. Alganey wrapped up in the backfield by Kelvin Clemens. Kelvin Clemens got the credit for the tackle, but the man who made the play in the backfield on Ganey was Chris Tolbert. We said he plays both ways, leading rusher for this ball club, and they forced the punt on fourth and eight from its own 32. Chris Tolbert is back deep. Dickerson just as gets a punt away, but he got run into. There is no flag. Tolbert will let it hit. And Todd Harrison is going to down it deep in Washington territory at the seven, make it the six-yard line. Johnny Dickerson really got clobbered, but there was no call. Well, he was hit by the defensive captain, Chris Tewitt, big senior, but the, the referee back there, Mr. Bernie Bauman, said he was blocked into the punter, so no flag is forthcoming. 63-yard punt that time by Dickerson pins the Wildcats in a hole at their own five. Hey, what Dickerson has risen to the occasion on several occasions this season. Really done a great job punting, and look where he's got Pensacola, Washington Wildcats backed up till now. On first down, Eddie Riley out across the 10 to about the 12. Seaburn McCray made the tackle that time. When he does so well, he just fills those gaps. Okay, Seaburn knows how to get to the open spaces. He reads the blockers as they're coming out, and he just goes in between them. And the few old defensive linebackers do that very, very well. They read the blocks, then they go to the hole, and sometimes, and most of the time, there's going to be an offensive back with the ball coming at him. And Seaburn was waiting right there and made the tackle. Now Kelvin Clemens is in the backfield. Give it to Riley again. Riley will have the first down out to about the 19. George Fleming had the first shot at Riley, made a diving reach for him, couldn't bring him down before Sim Banks came over to make the play. But the first down for Pensacola, Washington. A little bit of success there against the interior of the Buell's defense. Not many teams can do that, but Buell's has to watch when they run that pitch wide and start pulling those guards with two blocking backs ahead of that Tolbert or, or one of those other fast backs. That's where Buells has to be really careful that they don't get caught. First down now for the 19. Riley again. Stuffed after he gets to about the 22. All right, now Coach Jimmy Nichols has set this up now. He's run three times to the interior. I really believe right now they're going to pitch wide. You know, Jimmy Nichols was the head coach at the Pensacola Escambia, Ken, before coming over to uh, Pensacola, Washington during the summer. This team actually had no spring practice. What they considered their spring practice was the beginning of the year. And they were just learning things when they lost those first two games against Pensacola and Escambia. Riley got two, second and eight. It's Riley again. And the beginning of this game could easily Riley be termed the life of Riley as he's been getting the ball almost every time out. And this is what we expected. They're going to set that up, the interior run, to try to get those outside linebackers playing in, then shoot out there with a couple of blocking backs and one pulling guard to try to spring somebody and create a seal for Riley or else for Norman to break along with. So they'll face a third and four now from the 25-yard line. 2.53 to play in the first quarter and the clock running. Washington leading 7-0 over Buholtz. This is Riley again, but he is short of the first down to about the 28, maybe the 29. Tackle by McCray and Harrison. A little chess game going on here. They're going to try to pick up four or five a shot up the middle there. 
That time, Seaver McCray was over there along with Rodney Young to make that tackle. But uh, Jimmy Nichols, very, very offensive-minded head coach. Again, in his first year at Pensacola, Washington. What a fine job he's done. You look at Lamar Thomas, from the last punt. And now Golovka set the punt again. The Bobcats peel back for the return. This one didn't hang up too long. This is the kind they return. Lamar Thomas has good speed. He's to the outside, across the 40, down inside the 30, to the 20-yard line. Finally, Arthur Bry brought him out of bounds. Well, I was going to say he got a great non-block from Johnny Dickerson because Dicker uh, Kevin Peoples, I should say, was out there and didn't block him in, which would have ended in a clip. But as it turns out, there is going to be a clip. I may be wrong, Ken, but I think it's going to go against Sim Banks blocking from behind. He gets a fine return by Lamar Thomas. 15 yards from the point of infraction, and that pushes it all the way back to the 45-yard line of the Wildcats. Still excellent pos field position for a few holds, but uh, you got to be a little bit bummed out about that considering where they were. Under two minutes to go, first quarter, and here come the Cats. Looking to tie it up. First down from the 45-yard line of Washington. Keith Howell and John Algini in the backfield. This is Howell. Mark Jefferson brought down Howell. There's a flag down. Gray makes the stop. That, that flag, Ken, was thrown after the play. Now, the running back was clearly down, and they're going to say it's a face mask. And I think it might have been against number 62, Chris Truitt, after the play was done. He sort of made a little grab and saw that head jerk of the running back. And they're going to say it's a big one. They're going to call it a uh, major infraction. He can go either way, grabbing the face mask or pulling it. So they're going to give him 15 yards on the clip on the well, punt return. But it's the 28-yard line. First down, John McClain checks in on a wide receiver. He is split right. Lamar Thomas flank left. Howell and Ganey are the backs. Clint Alexander, the quarterback. Howell again. Down to the 26. Child Warnicke and his offensive coordinator, Bubba McGowan, felt that this team might be a little soft in the interior when they're... They do come very hard, and they send those linebackers, and they expect to run to spring the running back. But uh, they think they can, they've got a few soft spots in the interior of that defense there, especially since they make a hard rush, and they're going to run a lot of traps tonight. Second down and eight now from the 26. Alexander hits Johnny Dickerson, and Dickerson is hit hard at the, about the 16-yard line. Well, that time they sent Dickerson to the far side of the field where he was up against Corey Moultrie, and Moultrie nowhere near the type of athlete that uh, his counterpart on the other side is. That, of course, being Grandison, who made the interception for the touchdown. So, you all learning a little bit as this game goes along. Stay away from Grandison. They got the first down on that completion to Dickerson. First down from the 17. Second man through is John Alganey. Ganey's inside the 15 to maybe the 13. Time for about one more play in this first quarter, Ken. As we expected, it would be a fast game, and this first quarter has really flown by. Ganey got three, second and seven from the 14. Now Alexander to throw again. Out of the backfield, Keith Howell makes the catch. He's in for the touchdown. A juggling catch off his face mask as the first quarter comes to a close. At the buzzer. Last play of the first quarter. That's, again, the hard rush. Clint Alexander hung in there, accepted the rush, was hit by two men as he released the ball. But, again, it opened up that soft spot in the underbelly of the Wildcat defense. Chris Stewart was playing deep, and by the time he was able to come up there and hit the, uh, the running back as he made the catch, it was too late. And had he been able to get up there a little bit earlier and hit him, how would have dropped the ball because he was bobbling it? Out of the hold of John McClain, Robert McCarthy hits the point after, and as the first quarter ends... We've got a 7-7 game in the state region one championship.
of us living and working in the Gainesville area are visible proof of what's good for Gainesville. We represent diverse people, lifestyles, expectations, and concerns in our intelligent and sensitive community. Without a bond of pride, our only focus will be our differences. If living in Gainesville is good for you, then think it, live it, say it. Good for you, Gainesville. Good for you. Skeeter's your family place to eat. Down home cooking that can't be beat. Good heap and servants and our prices are fair. Come see us, cause Skeeter's people really care. Bean coffee that's freshly ground. Buttermilk biscuits famous all around. Live country music, good food and fun. Thanks to you for making Skeeter's number one. It gives you the idea of the strength of the wind tonight. Really a hard wind blowing out of the north. First and 10 for Washington at the 45. Again, Pensacola, Washington runs that ground attack. Very seldom do they pass. In fact, they have only completed 20 passes all year. Quarterback Ben has 20 of 60 for 280. Not in the game this season. <laughs> On first down, running the option left is Ben Howes, and he breaks to the outside. Gets close to the 45-yard line before Gary Willis puts a stop on it. can run the ball. He's picked up 316 yards in the year, eight and a half yards of pop. He got 18 on that one out to the 43, where it'll be first and 10. Eddie Riley again, stacked up at the 45 and pushed Riley back. Carries. Again, this is just the way they're mixing up the offense here. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Very, very hard, as we said all year long, to run against the middle of the Buell's defense. You seldom see a team break a long game against them up the middle. But you have to do that, run up the middle to keep the defense honest and to keep those outside linebackers staying inside so you can run the wide play. So, it's not well, a decision got one. to go. Give it to Dean House on first down. House carries. Or on second down, rather, with second and nine. Dale Ward makes the stop. And houses to about the 46-yard line. So to bring up third down. Well, what look, fashion designer, Bobby, <laughs> decided that yellow numbers yellow on numbers. white jerseys would look good and would be easy for those of us in high places to spot? I do not know. Third and seven now in house, looking to throw, but he's going to run it instead and drop by Dale Warren. What a shot he took from Dale Warren. Tell you what, House bobbled that ball as he was jolted by Warren. And Dale, I believe, will get a credit for a sack on that as he was tackled just behind the line of scrimmage. There's the black marauders in defense. The Cats with 41 quarterback sacks this year. Oh. Unbelievable. The off got a punt. Lamar Thomas standing deep. They set up for the return last time. Thomas got off a long one. He comes up on this one at his own 20. Nice move to the outside. Gets to the 26-yard line before he stopped there. Lamar with a nice move on number 80, Doug Mitchell on the outside there. To pick up about six or seven yards on that return. And Buolts comes again with Clint Alexander. You know, Ken, we've yet to see uh, young Jimmy Norman, the exciting sophomore in the game. And this is about the time of the game. Warnke and Bubba McGowan decide to use him. And he usually comes in and responds with a big play right off the gun. And guess who is in there now? Jimmy Norman in with John Algany. And pitch right to Norman. Sweeping across the 26 to about the 27. Jimmy's got the fastest feet on this team, and he just keeps them cranking, and it's hard to bring him down. Marzette Simpkins had to hold up him first, couldn't hold on, and and Epps was the one that finally brought him down. 
There you see Jimmy running into our picture, coming out after first round run of a couple of yards. He got two, second and eight now from the 27. John McLean and Lamar Thomas are the wideouts. Give to Keith Howell, the big fullback, who just caught a touchdown pass. He's moving, but he had about four or five white shirts around him. be a gain of one on forward progress. Well, you can see from the way this defense responds and reacts to the running game that that's the reason they've only given up uh, one touchdown or less their last that's four ball games. Remember, they shut out the fourth-ranked team in the state last week in a huge upset in their, uh, you know, visiting field, the Panama City Mosley, and 10-0. Before that, they defeated Pensacola State 28-7, defeated Rutherford 35-10, and Choctaw by a score of 24-10. They've only given up two touchdowns in the last three games. Third and seven, Alexander to throw again. Mulberry in the tight end position threw his hands at the 32. Clint, we've known sometimes gets off to a bad start. It looks as though he's off to a bad start again today. But he's got a very good arm. He's got great receivers. And he usually uh, makes his mark known before the end of the game. As you look at Chris Tolbert, Johnny Dickerson gets off a high punt. But it'll bounce to the left of Tolbert and be downed. Harold Monk on it at the 35-yard line of Washington. Down near the 35. There's Big Harold coming off the field. He tried to make a move on that football when he saw it coming back on him, but he did touch it inadvertently, so it is ruled down at about the 35-yard line, I would imagine. 37-yard punt, return. 37-yard punt into the wind for Dickerson. That brings his average down a little bit. But now it looks like, Ken, uh, this is going to start to develop into a midfield game as these defenses begin to assert themselves once they've uh, gotten used to what the, each other is running. Now the Wildcats go with two wide receivers, but on first down they back and House is across the 37, out to about the 37. First time uh, Washington's Wildcats came with that alignment with the time. Now Hank Fillingham and Greg Grandison are the wideouts to the bottom. Quickly hits. Fillingham, and Fillingham is off to the races. Final yard line by George Fleming. Kevin Peoples. Kevin Peoples. Looked like 69 yeah, instead of 89. Yeah. I was going to say, if George Fleming got there that, down there that yeah. fast. Fillingham made a quick inside move on Gary Willis that time. He was playing a left cornerback one-on-one. It was just a quick slant in, and when you hit that receiver on the dead run, he's off to the races, and Fillingham was, and it was luckily that they had one of their fastest men in there on defense, linebacker Kevin Peoples, who was able to run filling him down from behind, or he'd be in the end zone right now. Nice play by Washington on their first pass. 32 yards. Give it to Chris Tolbert on first down. He's inside the 30 to about the 28. That's where they'll spot it. Stopped by Peoples. It's hard to explain this, Ken, but it's a situation where a defense doesn't play a team the way they normally would because of the tendencies. This team has a tendency to run, so the cornerback does not normally play him the way he, he maybe should uh, under uh, wise conditions. But uh, they look for the run right now, and that time Willis got caught. But uh, Ewell's defense needs to rise to the occasion here. Second down, Tobert again. Into the teeth of the Bobcat defense at the 26. There's Bobby across town, the GHS Hurricanes in the 4A region playoffs, and the Santa Fe Raiders are down in Inverness Citrus. So three area teams in playoff competition, all with good shots. Four if you want to include interlocking, interlocking. which is undefeated. Rams have another fine football team. A little mix up here in the backfield as Howes rearranges his, his running backs. Third down and five. Howes option left to Tolbert. Tolbert has the first down inside the 20, inside the 10 and out of bounds. Pasco Williams, the right cornerback 
finally put him out of bounds. Well, he made a really nice fake Not to the to interior to Eddie down. Riley, fooled everybody and froze the linebackers and was able to free him to the outside. Really a nice execution that time on the option by Ben Howes. Great fake to Eddie Riley, the first man throw. First and goal with about five minutes remaining here in the first half, and you see limping off there, I believe, Chris Tolbert, Chris Tolbert their leading rusher and one of their top defensive players. Second like injury to the right leg. After he ripped off a 17-yard gain. And the Bobcats will take a timeout with 5.09 to play in the first half, a quick-moving first half. You're watching the Region 1 championship game, the state playoffs on Cox Keyblades High School Football Game of the Week. Ken Tomash, Bob D'Alessio with you from Florida Field on a chilly, windy night. But a good crowd on hand and good football. After one quarter, it's now we get the score from across town. The Purple Hurricanes of GHS trailing Jacksonville Lee in the first quarter, 7 0. And then they, 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 said, they did announce it that they, they just, yeah, that was the original score, Ken. They just announced that GHS did tie that game up. Even as we spoke. interesting about this Pensacola team we mentioned the way they have come on eight and two right now they actually lost three games this year we mentioned they got credited for a win after their opening 7-3 loss to Pensacola High then they were demolished by Emmett Smith and Escambia 35-0 then after defeating Milton 23-0 they were beaten by Pensacola Pine Forest 21-13 then once they got into district play and they get into it really late up in Pensacola they just started rolling and they're on a roll right now tonight First and goal from the nine. Eddie Riley inside the five to about the three. Riley carries. This is something we haven't seen that much this year. Ken Buell's getting beat at the line of scrimmage. That defensive front across, they've done a great job all season long. Scott McDonald and uh, I should say Rodney Young and Hudson. Dale Warren, but they're getting beat right now. Second down from the three. Riley is in for the touchdown. Practically untouched. And I'll tell you what, Pensacola, Washington has shown a ground attack here in this first half that we have not seen all season long. Well, we said they'd have to run to be successful, but and also on that drive, they hit a 32-yard pass, hit the seam in the zone. Tell you what, Buell's played Merritt Island. Merritt Island didn't move the ball against uh, them the way they are tonight. Greg Kalavka hits the point after, remains perfect. Coach Jimmy Nichols, Pensacola, Washington Wildcats have a 14-7 lead over the Buholtz Bobcats with 4.36 to play in the first half. Talked about Coach Nichols and how uh, during the summer he left Pensacola Escambia where he was the offensive coordinator to go over to Washington. Really must have been a, a hard tugging decision for him to make that to go over there. Of course, his son is the quarterback of Pensacola Escambia. We saw do such a fantastic job the other night in the first annual Florida Bowl here at Florida Field, which we were privileged to televise on Cox Cable Channel 8. Great to see the great Emmett Smith live in action. Golovka gets a foot into it, and it's going to go over John Algini's head and out of the end zone, so the young man of Russian descent, those foreign kickers, nails it. Da. Da. <laughs> he hit it. Das Vidania, as they say. First down from the 20-yard line for Buholtz. 4.36 to play in the first half. Now the Cats trail again by seven. They trailed early when Greg Grandison picked off Clint Alexander's second pass of the night and went 36 yards for a touchdown, but then they tied it up. Alexander to Keith Howell, 14 yards and a score, and Eddie Riley just scored on a three-yard run for Washington. First down, the counterplay to John Algany, and Ganey is to about the 28-yard line. Check out the 24. Well, now the clock moving. There's really not enough time left in this quarter, Ken, for Buolts to grind it out 
and to get downfield. They're going to have to go with some passes here, probably every other play, to be able to get that ball downfield in time as we now approach the four-minute mark. The winner of this game gets the winner of the Jacksonville-Sandalwood-Deland game played tonight. Ganey got five, second and five from the 25. Alexander over the middle to John L. Ganey. Or check that, Mickey Mulberry at the 29. So be just short of the first down. Yeah, Clint picked up a secondary receiver that time. He found the tight end, Mulberry, coming over the middle. Again, for his second completion, and it was the second. He did a hard rush, and he was hit hard by uh, number 34, Raison Gross, senior linebacker, as he released the ball. So twice, Clint has been punished, but he has made completions over the middle on that soft part of, again, the underbelly of the Pensacola defense. They do tend to drop back long on passes. Alexander keeps it himself, but there's flags. He got the first down, but maybe they weren't set correctly before the play. And Left maybe. side of the Buell's offensive line moved a, bit, a, a little bit early, it seemed. Looked like maybe Clint Lavender, number 66, the left guard over there. Either here, number 76, John Colbert, I couldn't tell which, but it was the left side of the Buell's offensive front. And you know, Bobby, as you mentioned, with that hard rush coming from the Wildcats, wouldn't be su surprised to see a screen or a draw here to take advantage of that. They like to screen the ball out of the backfield to the backs, and with Ganey and Norman in, they've got a pair of backs in the, with good hands. John McClain is a wide out, along with Lamar Thomas. And Alexander is going to go down at the 21-yard line. Coach Warnicke told me before the game, he says this team really comes hard. You saw evidence of it, evidence of it right there. Philip Hicks, among others, in there. But uh, two tacklers coming from the outside, but there were just too many men in white shirts and yellow numbers in his face. And I believe that was uh, Joffrey Bray who made the tackle number 45. Chris Tolbert is back in the ball game, standing deep to take the punt from Johnny Dickerson. This one's high but short. Tolbert will make the fair catch at his own 45-yard line. So 2.29 to play in a fast-moving first half. 14-7 Washington over Buholtz. And now the Wildcats will have the ball first down at their own 45. Dickerson gets 34 yards on that punt. Again, he's kicking into a very, very stiff wind coming out of the north. And it's very breezy here at Florida Field and a bit chilly. Ben Howes, the quarterback, has backs in an eye. Pitch it out to Eddie Riley. Riley hit hard. Hit hard, you could hear Riley it up here. here. Oh, defensive tackle. Knocked Touch heads with him. Riley got three, but it hurt. Great hit by Clifford Bell, who alternates with uh, George Fleming, defensive tackle. Scott McDonald that time was double teamed and it left Bell open to get in there and what a shot. We didn't need a field level mic for you to hear that one. They probably heard that one at Citizens Field during the GHS game. Second and seven now and House to throw again. A little too long for Greg Grandison. Gary Willis was back there defending. Good defensive technique by the Buholtz defense that time. Number 57, Rodney Young, and also number 22, Sim Banks. They realized quickly that with that quick drop by the quarterback, Howes, they were not going to be able to get in there, so they leaped as high as they could, got their arms up, and forced House to angle the ball a little higher than he would have liked to and messed up his throw, and it was a good play by the defense of Buholtz. There you see Howes, the junior quarterback, who's, as we said, only completed a third of his passes, 20 out of 60. He hit a big one on the Wildcats' last possession to get them close to set up their go-ahead touchdown. And now on third down, he's looking to throw again. Getting a hard rush. Just flips it out of bounds. He was getting pressured hard by the Buholtz front line. Yeah, Rodney Young was uh, finding his blocker, and the running back picked up Rodney Young for a double team, and it freed up Dale Warren to come shooting through, and that was Warren, number 14, who forced the quarterback that time, House, to get out of the pocket, and he just threw that ball away as he was about 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage. So Buell's defense bails out the offense that time, which was not able to move the ball, as they have done so many times this season. And now the Cats... Wildcats, I should say, have a chance to get it back from the Wildcats. 
and just call it Cats. A minute 41 to play in the first half, and Golovka will punt. Nice spiraling punt will go out of bounds, but hitting down oh. the sideline, it stayed in bounds and skipped into the end zone for a touchback. Well, hit, hit that hill, I guess, over there on the AstroTurf. I can't believe that stayed in bounds. And uh, you're going to look at the statistics on the punting in the first half, and you're going to say, gee, Buell's really got the worst of this because Golovka that time gets 54 yards on that punt. But Dickerson has held his own. Most of the punts haven't come here in the second quarter when Golovka and the Wildcats have had the benefit of that strong, brisk wind coming out of the north. Yes, you see the band on the field. We're getting close to halftime. Minute and a half remaining. First down for Behold. They trail 14-7. Alexander looking to throw on first down, looking for John McLean at the 30. McLean, nice catch. Close to the first down, but since he fell Alexander back fell. towards the line of scrimmage, he may be short. And the clock continues to tick. Clint got a really good, a lot of protection that time. The most he's got all game long, John Cobert just stuck his man at the line of scrimmage. John, 6'2", 290-pound senior with good blocking that time and pass protection for Clint Alexander. They are just short, second and one now. If they get the first down, their clock will stop momentarily. On the counter, John Algini laterals back to Clint Alexander. And Alexander lunges forward, but he'll still be short of the first down. John Algini, that play was going nowhere from the start, and Algini might have thought better than doing that. Clint said, no, please. But once he got it, he knew to go forward. And tell you what, if that man hadn't tripped him up, he might have got a few yards. But that's a terribly dangerous play to do in your own territory with less than a minute to go. So the Cats have to take a timeout as they do not get the first down. It'll be third and one from the 29 coming up. As far as the other playoff action in Class 5A, Apopka's at Vero Beach tonight. Lakeland at Tampa Jefferson, a school I know just a little bit about, having gone there. <laughs> Dunedin is at Bradenton Manatee. Palm Beach Gardens at Coral Springs Terravella. Carroll City at Miami Northwestern and Miami Columbus at Miami Southridge. Next week, of course, the playoffs continue the second round. On December 12th, the semifinals and the Class 5A championship game on December 19th. The 4A championship game will also be on the 19th. 1A, 2A, and 3A finish up a week earlier. When are you going to give us your picks? <laughs> when we get down to about December 18th. <laughs> That's when you're going to make your uh, predictions for the NFL also. Right? right. I got a feeling about those Jets this year. I don't know what it is. Third and one. Alexander to throw. Hits Lamar Thomas. First down at about the 31. That'll stop the clock momentarily. Grandison. Hurry up offense. That one was almost picked off as it bounced off the chest of John Algany, but Clint Alexander was under a heavy rush. Clint got absolutely no protection that time. As the offensive line alternates between looking great and looking awful. That time a great rush from uh, Jeffrey Bray, Jr., lineman for Pensacola, Washington, and showing good sportsmanship on that throw. Brea has introduced himself to Clint Alexander in the first half. And that's something I'm sure Coach Warnicke and Bubba McGowan do not want to see. Johnny Dickerson at the bottom of your screen. Lamar Thomas at the top. Alexander throwing for the sideline. And Dickerson just got turned all around. Alexander, intended for Dickerson. Well, they're looking to pick on Corey Moultrie. They know they're not going to get anywhere with Grandison, so they tried to get him to suck up on that a quick move and the pump fake to try to see if they can catch him coming in for an interception and then spring Dickerson long, but he didn't go for it. Dickerson wearing the goggles. No gloves. 29 seconds to go in the first half. Now the Cats face a third and 10 from their own 32. On the draw, John Algany is upended at about the 34. Gainey Harris. Raison Gross came shooting through there to beat his block and got a hold of the feet of Gainey and did a little tumble sort. One, five. And I guess Pulse will now call a timeout. timeout. This I don't understand. The clock could have continued to run.
23 seconds of play now, and the clock stopped, and Pensacola, Washington leading Buholtz 14-7 as Johnny Dickerson drops the punt at his own 20, and Chris Tolbert drops to his own 25. Dickerson gets it away, a high spiral, and it will hit and be down inside the 30. The 27-yard line, exactly 10 seconds to play in the first half. Dickerson punt. A quick moving first half, took under an hour. And at halftime, the Wildcats of Pensacola, Washington lead Buholtz 14-7. Strange situation. Well, I'm glad that uh, I finally got some prediction right. I thought it would be a fast moving first half, and it was. So I finally score before our season ends here. Uh, no, it, it was an interesting game. Buholtz only able to mount an offensive drive once, and uh, Washington really only once. They scored once on, an, on the interception in the first series offensively for Buholtz, but uh, been pretty much of a defensive battle, and I think uh, the defense is pretty much canceling each other out, Ken, but uh, the offense got Buholtz in trouble early, and that's the difference in the game right now, 14-7. Turning the ball over. Both bands are here tonight. So it should be a good show and enjoy. The Wildcats have a very, very good uh, band, I've been told. So we'll get a good look at them right now, and then we'll be back with the start of the second half in about 15 minutes. I thought I've got to go on a diet again. I'll starve, I'll try pills or powders, then I'll do what I always do, gain it all back. Then I thought, no, it's going to be different this time. I'm going to Diet Center. No drugs, no gimmicks. I lost the weight, and they're helping me keep it off. See, can be different. Diet Center, come on, you're gonna make it this time. Meet Bel Air's happy new family. I hate my life. Well, how's it going, Mike? It's Miguel, I hate my life. Maybe it's something in the water here. Hey, come on, you're gonna love this place. Bel Air is the best. Uh, it sure is a far cry from East L.A. Yeah, East L.A., East L.A. Bobby Sherman. Where's that again? And Lenny Santoni. I love you. And I love you. Sanchez of Bel Air. Fridays at 8, 7 Central on USA. <laughs>
How about a burger, baby? No, no, get that away. I don't want no burger. I sat down with clown today. I want a fresh, delicious sandwich like the submarines that they serve at Subway. I don't want no greasy chicken. Don't want my dinner from a big machine. I want to savor everybody. I want a treat tonight. I want a Subway sub shop submarine. Look for Subway's money-saving coupons in the paper mint. Carpet Brokers is having a fantastic sale. And that means prices are slashed. Right, Arnold? Velvets, plushes, patterns. Now, prices are cut, sliced, scissored, slashed. Come in today, because a sale this big can't last forever. After that, all those little price tags have to go back to where they were. That's going to mean a lot of work for somebody at Carpet Brokers. Right, Arnold? Come to the price slashed sale at Carpet Brokers.
this close to you, but we only have one umbrella. Get used to it. <laughs> Golovka will kick it off to start the third quarter. You realize, of course, no umbrellas allowed in Florida field camp. Golovka's kickoff goes out of bounds on the far sideline, so we'll have to kick it over. I sure hope it's raining over at Citizens Field, because I hate to think those people are having it any better than we are. Of course, they do have a press box. We've got the original open-air booth here at Florida Field. Washington pushed back five yards because of the ball going out of bounds, so five-yard penalty, and they now will kick it off from the 35-yard line. Ball bouncing along the ground, finally picked up by an up man out at the 28-yard line. That was Daniel Schaefer, a linebacker. And he came looked pretty the good running the ball there. And he gets it all the way out to about the 34-yard line where the Buholtz Bobcats will start it off with 11.54 remaining, and they trail by a score of 14-7. to 7. And The big reason why, offense. They managed just 55 yards of total offense in the first half, 39 rushing and six, or 39 passing and 16 rushing. Meanwhile, Washington with 121 yards in total offense in the first half. First down now from the 35, Clint Alexander to throw. Hits Johnny Dickerson at the 43. I'm sure Coach Warnicke and Bubba McGowan, and his offensive coordinator, talked that over at halftime and said, hey, 16 yards rushing. Let's take it to the air. Let's go with our senior. Clint Alexander and ride his right arm, and they start off passing. So this may be an indication of things to come in this second half for Buholtz. Alexander, 5 of 11 in the first half. Give to Jimmy Norman, his second carry of the game. He needs out to midfield. Jim Norman carries. I can't get over Buell. It's only with, I think we've had a half that they haven't had a running back that we've televised them this, this year. It's a tremendous job by the Wildcat defense. And as we said, this is nothing new for them. They went up to Panama City and shut out Mosley by a score of 10 nothing last week to win the district. So that's what got them here. First down from midfield to John McLean. Alexander's pass to the 40-yard line should be another first down. 
Two quick hitters from the arm of Clint Alexander. Corey Moultrie, that defensive back. And the linebacker on that side, David Jones. So they seem to have found a seam there where they've been uh, exploiting the defense here in the early going second half. Jimmy Norman on first down. Gets to Tim about Norman the 36-yard line. And if this rain's going to keep up, let's hope this is the first. Rain not up. Four, second and six from the 36 now. Opening possession of the third quarter. Ten minutes to play in the third, and Buholtz trailing Washington 14-7. Again, Alexander to the air, to Lamar Thomas. That ball was low, they're gonna say he did hold on. They'll give him the play at the 29-yard line. Chris Tolbert, the middle linebacker, came up, faked the blitz, went back, and then came on the blitz, but again, he holds with quick hitters, not giving the Panama City High School Wash, uh, Wildcats a chance to put too hard a rush on Alexander. They're getting rid of the ball quickly, and they've had three completions, which I believe is uh, two more than they had the entire first half. <laughs> well, they had five the first half. Another first down from the 29. Jimmy Norman again. Inside the 25 to the 24. It's that first half, I meant to say first quarter. I think they only completed uh, one in the first quarter. But, uh, Alexander starting to look good here in the second half as he's moved his team upfield from about the 35 of Buolts to the 25. Pensacola, Washington. Second down now, and give it to Keith Howell, and the big fullback breaks through. Lost the football, and Washington has recovered at the 15-yard line. The ball was stripped from Keith Howell as he got down inside the 20, and Washington recovers. Guess who came up with the fumble? Greg Grandison, who had the interception for the touchdown, and the best athlete on the team. Grandison knows, has a nose for the ball, and Buolts turns it over deep in Washington territory. And that's twice that the Bobcats have killed themselves with a turnover on a drive. Three turnovers in the game, Ken, for Buolts. Eight and a half minutes to play in the third quarter, and from the 15-yard line, Washington has the ball. Getting out to about the 18-yard line is Dean House. But I don't know how many times they've called on a Buholtz defense to bail out the offense this season, but they've done it time and time again, and now they have to do it again. Man, I got oh, that was Eddie Riley getting up to the 19. We've got flags and whistles. Can Calvin Gillis, number 21, the wide receiver for the Wildcats, missed time the snap count that time, jumped off sides, five yards, will be assessed against the Wildcats, and it'll push him deeper into their own territory. And now it's an opportunity now. It'll be about a second and 11 for the Buell's defense to really come hard and stack that line well, with eight men. Starting to rain an awfully lot harder now. And the fans are heading for cover. Wish we could. Second and 11 from the 14. Give it to Eddie Riley again across the 15 to the 16. Well, that's what they, the Buell's defense did. They teed off that time. They had the four down linemen and the four linebackers just right behind them in between. And they just shot off the line of scrimmage. There was nowhere for the Wildcat running back to go that time. It brings up a third and long. Again, this is a team that does not like to pass. I look for them right now to run a, an option probably to the far side of the field. Again, with the rain coming down as hard as it is, the ball is getting a lot slicker and it's gonna be even harder to pass. Third down and the counter. Wrapped up at the 25-yard line by Gary Willis is Chris Tolbert. Well, just as we expected, they, they 
begged the counter inside and then pitched wide. And uh, it was a good play and a good call, but Buells was ready for it. First down, ball pass. But on that last play when he hit Willis, he was able to fall forward for the first down. I thought he might have been a little bit short, but where they spotted it on that extra effort, Colbert does get the first down, so a big third down conversion for the Wildcats. First down, this is Eddie Riley again, and Riley's out to the 29. Riley carries. That really was a crucial third down pickup for the Wildcats, Kim, because I tell you, the you know, third and long situation, it was a golden opportunity for Buells to, to stick them there and, and come out with this change of possession with good field position, but uh, Wildcats rising to the occasion themselves and now get a little breathing room deep in their own territory as they're now out to the 30-yard line. And the clock continues to move with six minutes remaining in about two seconds here in this third quarter. Second and six. Second man through is Eddie Riley again to the 31. Clifford Bell, the host of Black Shirts there to greet him as he's coming through. But still, the Wildcats, they have done what they set out to do here. They have established their ground game. In the early going, Buells had stuffed them a couple of times. And of course, that interception with the touchdown hurt the Cats in the first half. And they held the Washington Wildcats to only one sustained drive. But now, it appears as though Washington has established a running game here on Buells in the third quarter. They'll have to do something here on third and four. Give it to the first man through, and he is going nowhere. That is Dean House. House wrapped up by Kevin Peoples and company. Well, now Buell's turned the trick. That's what they had to do. They would like to have done it on the previous Dean series, Harris. but they finally do stop them on third down there, and still they're going to be able to get good field position because, remember, on this punt, Golovka is going to be in the same boat that Johnny Dickerson was in the third quarter. He's going to be punting into a stiff wind, except one more disadvantage. He's got that rain coming down, so really going to be tough for him to get it even over the 40-yard line of Buell's. The Cats peel back for the return once again. Nice kick by Golovka. Thomas takes it at his own 28 and tripped up as he goes across the 35-yard line. Well, Arthur Gol Bry. Golovka did a smart play that time. He didn't go for a booming punt. He kicked the line drive, yeah, 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 so it didn't get up there where the wind could really take full advantage of it. It was a line shot, and he kicked it all the way to about the 31-yard line. Great punt by Golovka. Just a, a wise decision on his part. Very smart young man and a very talented kicker. 4.35 to play in the third quarter, and Buholtz at their own 35 with a first down, trailing 14-7 in this region championship game. Again, the quick hitter to John McLean. McLean making a nice diving catch and sliding to the 45-yard line. Well, they got really have number 22, Corey Moultrie, shaking his head. He doesn't know what to do because he's getting beat and beat and beat on that quick move. A little slant in. Moultrie is just taking that fake from the receiver to the inside, and he's just getting lost. From the 43, it'll be second and two after an eight-yard pickup. Exactly four minutes to play in the third. Clock running. Norman done. Across the 45 to the 47. Should have a first down. Yeah, Norman Beers. Can they have had so much success throwing that quick play? And I mean, yeah, it's not that. just that they're completing the balls, is that those receivers are wide open, and Moultrie is just not able to keep up with them. But I think they're going to go to it a lot more. And I'll tell you what, it puts a lot of pressure and a burden on that free safety, especially on the slippery field. Coming at an angle, somebody puts a move on him, and he slips. It's off to pay dirt. First down now, Alexander looking quickly to throw again, but looking deep for Lamar Thomas, too deep. Out of bounds, and Lamar Thomas takes a couple of cheerleaders from Pensacola to the turf with him. Uh, it looks sort of like fun. Aside from that, again, they did go long on that left side, working on that same young man, Corey Moultrie, and Thomas, with his great speed, had him beat, but there was double coverage. Second and 10 now from the 47. Again to the air, Alexander. Out of the backfield, the screen to Keith Howell. Howell breaks it. 
but does not break the tackle of number 32, Capri Williams. You know, I'll tell you what, Clint Alexander had me wondering for a second, so I'm sure he had the defense full. He looked to the right, and then when you, when you look to the right, I was saying, are they going to start throwing at Grandison again, all the success they've had on the left side? No, they set up a middle screen and really not brought the defenders in and just flipped it over them. It was a nice play to Howell, and they're all the way down to the 40 of Washington. Give it to John Elgini on first down. Legs moving and down to about the 37. Tackle by Chris Drew. Gini got two, second and eight. Through the hands of Johnny Dickerson and almost picked off by Greg Grandison. I still say they should work that other side. I would not take a chance with Grandison. And he didn't see that ball coming because when it went over Dickerson's shoulder, by the time he had to react and hit him in the shoulder pad, but you see number 27, I would stay away from him. I promise you I would stay away from him. Especially when they're having so much success on the other side with number 22, Moultrie. I would not throw anywhere near Grandison. Those of you that just joined us, he ran the first pass Clint Alexander threw for a touchdown back on an interception. Norman to the 35. And Norman carries. But short of the first down. And now a decision to make for Coach Al Warnicke. Too long for a field goal. I wouldn't say they're quite in four down range, but uh, they're going to talk it over now. Why is the decision to take a timeout here? Timeout, you hold. Again, you're right, Ken. Too, a little bit too long for a field goal. Besides, a field goal still would leave them down four points. And obviously, with this huge win behind him, you don't want to punt from here because you might only get a net gain of about 15 yards up because Dickerson is sure to put it into the end zone. So let's uh, call an offensive play and see if we can pick up five or six yards. They've been and successful on the quick hitter. Maybe see that to John McClain again. Well, I'm sure that's what not, I don't think they'll throw it here because I'm sure over on the other side, on the defensive side of the field, that's what uh, Coach Ronnie Bond and uh, Simpkins, Coach Ed Simpkins, their defensive coaches are talking about right now. They say, hey, I know they're going to throw this. So the choice is for Bubba McGowan, the offensive coordinator from Buell, to say is, I'm in a chess game. Well, they're looking for the slant in because that's what we've been working on. Okay, let's run a pitch instead. Or a trap. So I really don't think they'll throw the slant in right here. Al Warnicke leaves the huddle. In fact, I think they're going to run a pitch to the right side because they're looking for the slant to the left. I think the defense will stack up that way. Let's see where the free safety goes. Yeah, he's leaning a little bit towards the far side of the field. Keith Howell and Jimmy Norman are the running backs. Fourth down. Instead to throw is Alexander. Picked off. Grandison. Down the sideline. Finally, Mickey Mulberry. And now the ball is loose. And Buell oh, has just recovered at the 15. Unbelievable. I thought Greg Grandison was gone for his second touchdown of the night. And when Mickey Mulberry tackled him from behind, he swatted at the ball and it popped loose. Recovered at the 15. Well, Buell's got two breaks that time. And one of them, it turned out if they had gotten it, it would have been a mistake because Grandison definitely stepped out of bounds at about the Buell's 43-yard line. He slipped and he was definitely out of bounds. I wish we had a replay to show you. But then he went up and, of course, they fumbled. I cannot believe, and I don't like to criticize coaches, but that was just a terrible call to throw at this guy. I cannot believe they're picking on a guy like that. And again, they paid the price. Now with a minute 40 to play in the third, the cats are backed up on their own side of things. Norman, Norman gets out to about the 19, maybe the 20. You know, Buell's earlier this season when they played Merritt Island, there was a tremendous free safety for Merritt Island, probably uh, the best free safety in the state, and they they did a good job throwing the ball up the sidelines to keep it away from him because he was so dangerous. And tonight, uh, they've done it after the, the first mistake when he intercepted the ball, but I can't believe on a crucial play like that they, they tried to go at Grandison. But that's football. Norman got five. A minute to play third quarter. Alexander to throw once again. This time looking left. 
Dickerson, nice catch at the 32, spun down at the 30. Dickerson was open for, hoping for some running room, but Capri Williams came up with good help. The deep defensive back on that side and made a nice open field tackle on Dickerson. But the catch well, came first down. Tackle. And Clint Alexander, as we said earlier, gets off to a slow start, but you can be sure he's going to make you know he's out there before the game is out. As we approach the end of this third quarter and what shapes to be a really, really good fourth quarter of football coming up in this championship game. John McLean is at the top of your screen, split left. Lamar Thomas at the bottom, flank right. John L. Ganey. Ganey breaks out to the 45-yard line. David Jones, the sophomore contained man, the was John L. Ganey. He didn't think he had that type of burst, but Ganey busting through the middle that time. And again, Buells looking to take advantage of the weak spots of the Pensacola Washington defense. They haven't found that many in the early going, but they're starting to pick their spots now. 15 yards for Ganey from the 46, first down. 15 seconds of play in the third quarter. Alexander quickly to Dickerson, but he was hit. At one. Well, if you can't stop the play and you're getting beat, this is one thing. We talked about it all the time of it with those wide receivers for Buells. At that time, he did react. He was used to them putting the outside fake and making the inside move on him. And he did follow Dickerson, but his timing is way off. And Corey Moultrie is having an awful problem over there. And Buells will just stick to it because this kid is really in trouble. First down, and that should do it for the third Gainesville, the region championship game in region one, and Pensacola, Washington leads. Now the team switch sides, Ken, and of course, Puels will be going into the win for the remainder of this ball game. Very interesting, that's the goal they chose to defend for the fourth quarter. They had their choice, remember? which goal to defend, and they picked that they would defend this one for the fourth quarter, and it may play a big part of this region championship game, but two powerhouses on the field, Buell's 10-1, and one. and of course, Pensacola Washington with a record of 8-2, and two, counting the forfeit over Pensacola High. Bobcats looking to tie it up or maybe go ahead from the 40-yard line, second and 10 as we begin the fourth quarter. Ken Tomash, Bob D'Alessio with you from Florida Field. Pitch right to John L. Ganey. Ganey slashing to the 30, keeps on his feet to the 20 and out of bounds at the 19. That's the John L. Ganey that the few old fans know is just inside that jersey number 32 and they've been waiting for him to explode with that kind of running. And what a block he got on the outside from Robbie Ward, the right guard who pulled and sprung that play. Robbie Ward, number 54, a six foot, 200 pound senior, started that play off. And believe me, Ganey wouldn't have gotten nowhere near that type of yardage had it not been for number 54, Robbie Ward. From the 18, first down. Norman again. Norman to the 17. Now the few old fans who had taken cover under the uh, overhang down in the end zone and a few other places of shelter in the open air at Florida Field decide, hey, it's getting too close down to the end zone. We're coming back on the field in force. Let's brave this rain in and root our Bobcats into the end zone. Remember, the Cats have gotten down deep twice and have given it up because of fumbles. Second and nine, Keith Howell. To maybe the 13. So third and five from the 13 now. What do you do here, Bob? Well, on the basis of the way that play looked, and it, some of their running plays tonight, Ken, they've been a little bit slow developing. And against a team which reacts like this, see, that last play could have gone farther, but they just too slow developing. I believe you throw here. And again, to throw a quick one, I look maybe Lamar Thomas cutting over the middle. Thomas is in the slot right, John McLean split right, and Alexander is looking to throw, and Lamar Thomas is going across the middle, but they flip it out to John O'Ganey. Ganey is in for the touchdown. Well, right play, Bob, and the secondary receiver was open, John O'Ganey, and Alexander hit him. Well, I'm not even sure that was the secondary receiver because Clint Alexander, twice now, has burned them with screen plays. Now, 
tell you something about this. That's not normally a play you see that deep in the uh, part of the field. That's a play normally that you look to spring for about 60 yards on your end of the field. But very interesting, the Pensacola-Washington team never sees a screen play. They don't even have one in their playbook. They are just that power eye team. They do not even have a screen play, so they're not used to seeing one. Robert McCarthy kicks the point after, and we're tied with 10-16 to play in this ballgame from Florida Field. People who spend time around the water know that polarized sunglasses are a must. Every ripple and wave reflects like a mirror, making it thousands of times brighter than your eyes really like. That's why top boating and fishing professionals agree. Flying fisherman polarized sunglasses are your best buy. They feature impact-resistant glass lenses, tinted with the perfect shade of amber or smoke. Plus, they won't scratch like plastic ones do. And you get maximum visibility through water glare. Just look at the difference. Two styles of optical quality frames to choose from with stainless hinges that resist corrosion. Order now and get a lens cloth, safety cord, and clip-on carrying case free with each pair, all for only $14.95. Send $14.95 plus $2 shipping to Flying Fisherman, Box 545, Isla Mirada, Florida, 33036. Or call 1-800-432-2382, extension 24. Visa and MasterCard accepted. So well, making the hit on special teams. First and 10, Washington. Riley and Dean House in the eye behind Ben Howes. The right tackle jumped. 77 Erskine Robinson jumped before the snap and it'll back the Wildcats up five. Hey, Watkin, these are two very evenly matched teams. You know, Coach Boyke said coming in that this uh, Pensacola Washington Wildcat team reminded him a little bit of GHS. They had all sorts of problems with the Canes in a 9 6 victory earlier this season, which we televised here on Los Angeles Channel 8. But now you take a look at it. Now that the offense of the Fuels has gone down and pushed a score in, you put everything together, these teams are just about even. And I would have to give the advantage right now with the momentum in the whole field, the Fuels in this region championship game. First and 15, and Howes out of the backfield to Grandison. Starring on both ends of the field tonight. Fuels has turned the ball over four times in this ball game. They still have managed to tie. Washington has turned it over just once, right after their last turnover. Fuels on the interception from Grandison. Six yards to the 24, second and nine upcoming. Filling them wide right to the bottom of your screen. Give it to House, the fullback. House lunges to about the 28. Actually, the Wildcats got great blocking on that play up the middle there, and it was just an individual tackle by Seaburn McCray. Everybody was blocked, and he got into the second into the uh, secondary almost where the linebackers positioned themselves, and Seaver McRae was the only one anywhere near him They made a good open field tackle. A good blocking that time from Washington. But it'll be third and five now from the 28. House again, first down and more. David Fraser tripped him up as he got to the 38. But Todd Harrison had a shot at that runner in the backfield, but hit the hole quickly, and there you see the first down indication given by the referee. Benny Bauman. Two tough teams going at it here. Just a matter of wills in this one. 8.50 to play in the game. 14-14. Washington with the ball first down from their own 38-yard line. House again to the 40. Clock ticks on, and now the tension starting to build here. Eight and a half remaining in this ball game with that score tied at 14. Pensacola rounded out against Buells. They have that infrequent success, which makes this game so unpredictable. 
from the 40, second and eight. Riley, and he bangs out to the 44. So another third down situation upcoming with 7.50 to play in the game. Kevin Peoples, the right linebacker on that side with a good hard tackle. And again, Buellos is doing what they have to do. They're stopping the running game. They're not giving them first downs on their first two running plays. They're making them go to third down situations. If they do that, sooner or later, they're going to stop them on third down. Washington has picked up two first downs on third down this drive. Here they're going again. Third's a charmer, they say, Ken. Howe's looking to throw. And has his man Calvin Gillis, the tight end, across midfield. I think Buholz was looking for a run. They were oh, at backs in the eye really on third down. Great call. Gary Willis and Kevin uh, Peoples on the tackle that time. But a gutsy call. A team that does not pass much. They've only completed 20 passes all year going into this game. But the two they've thrown tonight, the receivers have been wide open. That was a crucial third down. Great call by Coach Jimmy Nichols, the head coach and offensive mind of this team. House on first down to the 44. And now the Wildcats grinding out clock, 6.51, 6.50 to play in the game. Well, Buells is going to get the ball back. That's not a problem right now. They know they're going to get the ball back, but are they going to get it back after the defense holds? That's the big question of this game. This is the series for the game. Riley again. Riley breaks a tackle and gets down to the 36, close to the first down. The fullback, Dean House, who does most of the blocking in that power eye, led him through the hole there. The big junior, Dean House, number 36, put a block on Kevin Peoples, and that was able to spring him for such a long game. He got seven, but they needed eight, so it'll be third and one, with six minutes to play exactly in the game. Fourth third down situation in this series, Ken. Bobcats really dig it in. Keeping it himself is Howes. He should have the first down. Ben Howes, I'm very impressed with Ben Howes. You know, he doesn't have really big numbers. He's only a junior, but he's looked very, very good tonight executing this offense. It's not Chop Whipper he's going up against either. That few old defense is as tough as anybody. And there you get a good look at him. Big number 84 right there, Todd Harrison. 57, Rodney Young. From the 35 now, first down. Eddie Riley. Warren in the backfield brings him down at the 40 with help from Rodney Young. And Robert. Tell you what, I don't know where Dale Warren came from, from that play. I mean, he just shot into that backfield. We talk about him sometimes during the year. Little guy, plays defensive end. We don't know how he does it sometimes. It's, he's always playing up against bigger people, but. Every once in a while, you'll see Dale Warren in the backfield with nothing but a running back and his arms around him. That's why he's in there, I guess. Dale Warren, number 14. Loss of five, second and 15 from the 40. How's to throw again? Looking long, too long. Gary Willis is going to pick this one off at the 15. Willis gets a couple blocks, still on his feet, and hits hard at the 29-yard line. He took on number 89, Hank Fillingham, the wide receiver. Head on, Gary Willis showing what a great athlete he is. I'm really not sure who that pass was intended to. It might have been the wide receiver. I got a feeling they were looking for the running back, the power back, number 24, Chris Tolbert, coming out of the backfield. But that was so far overthrown, I can't believe it. And look at the happiness on the sideline. The man of the hour right now, that senior, six foot one, number 47. There he is, Gary Willis. Second turnover of the game for Buells, and they have come on the last two possessions. And if Willis isn't all county, I don't know who is. First down from the 24. Keith Howell, the fullback, across the 25 to the 26. Oh, and I'll tell you what, after something like this, especially when you got a good defense, and we know it from watching the Buell's defense, when the offense turns it over, the Buell's defense comes out really fired up, wanting to turn the ball over.
catch that defense on a quick hitter because they're all lined up at the line and they're about to, they said, we're going to stick it to you. We're going to bail our offense out. And they're going to be coming really, really hard. They have a tendency to do that anyway. A quick pass here would be successful. And there it is. Great call, Bob Galicio across the 35 to the 37 to John McLean, who's having a great night tonight. I got to watch myself, Ken. I don't want anybody to think I got a future in this business. <laughs> No, but that was the good call. It was right there. Split the defensive backs. And again, they're working that same side where number 22 is Corey Moultrie. I think they have learned their lesson right now, and they're near Grandison. Clock, I would hope so. Clock continues to run. 318 to play in the game now. First down. Keith Howell again. Howell, a few yards out to the 39. And this is a war of wills right now, and I hope it doesn't go to it, but uh, the way this is looking right now, this is going to a tiebreaker. This is just a tough game, and I think we may be looking at overtime with less than three minutes to go. These teams are really evenly matched, and they put on a great show here. Which means to say I don't like the system. <laughs> Could use about 35, maybe 40 yards to get in good field goal range. And Alexander may be looking for some of it here as he screens it out of the backfield to Ganey. Ganey took on a tackler, and the tackler dumped him on his head at the 39-yard line. So no gain. Capri Williams and David Jones were there. I mean, you can only go to the well so often, and they burned them twice big time on that screen play, including the one for the touchdown. But uh, again, when you got a good defense like this, even though it's a young defense, they learn quickly. Sometimes they can react and make the plays, and sometimes uh, it's just talent that they're lacking as at that one quarterback position. But they learn, and they stop that screenplay, and it's tracked. Good play by the defense. The Bobcats don't get it here. We may be looking at overtime. I expect they would punt. Alexander to throw. Pressured. Fumbles the football, but it's picked up by Harold Monk, the center. And Monk gets to about the 40-yard line, so it'll be a loss. And I think we're going to see overtime. Whoa, I'll tell you what, that ball was stripped a hard rush. Clint did the wise thing to step up, but a backup linebacker, Marzet Simpkins, number 16, stripped him, and I don't think he realized that he had hit the ball. He thought maybe he hit a pad because he didn't go for it, and the ball just bounced harmlessly there, and fortunately for the Cats, they picked it up. But they're going to give the ball up, and with about a minute and a half to go, it looks as though the Wildcats will get it back. But Johnny Dickerson wants to make sure they get it back, not in good field position. It's a decent bounce. And it'll be down finally inside the 25 at the 23-yard line. Well, more importantly, with that roll, about 10 more seconds expired on the clock while that ball was rolling. Not only did he get a huge punt on that, but he took up a lot of time. And now, 115 remaining. And again, the bad thing about the offense that they run is you can't put points on the board quickly as Pensacola, Washington just runs a ground attack. They don't go to the air much, and Buell now is looking for the pass. They have to be because they don't want to get burned long, so I don't think they're going to throw it here. Riley in motion, top of your screen. Howes to throw to Grandison, and Grandison looking to throw in the flea flicker. Throwing deep and overthrows the tight end, Calvin Gillis. What a great call. Sure. Buell's defense, you know they were going to have people deep, but when you saw that pass go out to the side, the defensive backs were all the way deep. They can't tell from their vantage point on the field that that ball is going laterally or backwards. They just see a ball going in the air, so their natural tendency is to call up to make the play. But all of a sudden, hey, you put it, the, the wing back or the wide receiver in this case just takes off, and they say, hey, I guess that was a lateral, but you really can't tell. And a trick play can work. FSU does it a lot. And that time, Washington almost did. Howes was looking for Chris Tolbert, but Tolbert wasn't looking for the ball. They, they shot their load on that passing play. They're not, uh, not going to break one on Buells on that uh, on the trick play. That was the one they had to get. They're not going to move it on the long pass against Buells. Again, they're not a passing team. Their best bet right now, Ken, is to run a trap play here. They need to spring one of their runners for a long game to stop the clock, but uh, they're setting themselves up here with two incompletions, and they're going to have to punt and leave you all some time on the clock. Third down from the 22, 45 seconds to play in regulation. House overthrows his man out of the backfield, almost picked up by Gary Willis. I'll tell you, I think this is a mistake the way they ran this. 
He only took a few seconds off the clock, and you know, Buells has been known to send some people after a punter. And with 41 seconds remaining, all they need is a field goal. They could, you know, get a bad punt here, block a punt, set up the field goal, and walk away with a region championship. And uh, I have to question the offensive thinking that time of the coaching staff of Pensacola, Washington. I've been doing a lot of questioning of the coaches lately, Ken. I hope they don't come after me for this. They're probably just worried about the weather, about the game. They don't worry about what I'm talking about. But uh, to run three passing plays like that when you're not a passing team, I thought for sure, once they didn't do it on the uh, trick play, that they would have run out the clock. But this, this is strange. It was deep in their own territory as they were, that they would try to throw two more passes. Robert McCarthy's walking around on the Buholtz sideline. Now John Elgini comes over to him and says, hey, be ready, guy. You know, there's a, the saying is, people could say, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. There's another saying that not many people hear about, nothing ventured, nothing lost either. So they took a shot here, and let's see if they're going to have to pay for it. It'd be a shame to see them lose a game like this. Of course, it's a shame to see you losing a tiebreaker. Wish they could play a doubleheader, not in this weather, though. A lot of pressure on Greg Golovka now, the young man of Russian descent. Stands at his own 10. And if Lamar Thomas, who's standing at his own 46, can get any kind of good return, maybe one or two quick plays, but Golovka does get a good punt off. Thomas will take it at his own 40. Up the sideline, out of bounds at the 49. A good play by Lamar Thomas. He didn't know how far that punt was going to sail, but when he saw it going towards the sideline, his first idea was catch it and run out of bounds. Then as he started to make his move, he saw he could pick up about 10 or 8 yards. He did so, stepped out of bounds and stopped the clock. Buells has a chance to pull this game out. Can they can run four plays here in this time. The only disadvantage is they're going into a stiff win. So instead of having to get about 30 yards, they probably need about 40 to get a field goal, though, to be honest. Even though they're starting at midfield, they're probably going to have to get about to a 15-yard line for a successful field goal attempt. But still, with Clint Alexander in fourth place, not that difficult. They've got one timeout remaining. Draw play to Ganey. Ganey, first down and hurdles to the 36-yard line. You talk about fooling everybody. Are you kidding me running that play? smart, knowing they had one timeout left. If they got stuck, they could have called and still had three plays to execute. Great call by Bubba McGowan. Bubba, I'm sorry about criticizing you and Coach Warnicky before on the other play throwing at Madison. You made up for it right there. 20 seconds to play in regulation. Quickly to John McLean, but over his head. Out of bounds. That's no big deal. I mean, that's only, it just stops the clock. That's just, you know, at, for all intents and purposes, that's a good play. 16 seconds left, they can still run three passing plays. You see the time right there superimposed. They can still get a couple of plays off. And again, one time out left, they can run another draw if they want to. Getting very close to field goal range. They're at the 36. At least 15, maybe 20 more yards they need. Second down. There's the draw again. Ganey gets to the outside, gets a block. Did not get out of bounds. But they have the timeout. And they and call the, it. The clock stops right here on the first down, but Buholtz is going to use that timeout anyway. Did he get the first down? Yes, he got 12 to the 24. Unbelievable. Now, they did use their timeout. Big decision time. Do you go for the field goal right now there or do you run a sideline pattern? There he is. Robert McCarthy is well, coming on. This would be about a 41-yard attempt. Ken, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of time left to run a quick sideline pattern, and you just throw the quickie and say, hey, either we complete it or the clock stops on the incompletion. We can complete it and go out of bounds. I think that might be a good shot to go right now, but we're going to go with McCarthy. And hey, they're on a roll on this series. Who am I to question them now? But that's an awful long field goal into the win. John McLean will hold. The block is set at the 32. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. And of course, Pensacola, Washington, let's see if they call a timeout to ice him. Remember, this is Buell's timeout. Pensacola, Washington can call a timeout themselves right now and let McCarthy sit out there and think about it and get called. Let's see if they do it. Well, I'd call a timeout right now if I were them. 
Eight seconds to go. The snap, the hold, the kick, it's blocked. Washington has blocked the kick. Regulation has expired at Florida Field. There's a flag down. The kick was blocked. The flag is going to be roughing the kicker. I don't understand how they can call roughing the kicker because clearly number 62, Chris Truitt, came through and blocked the ball. Now I'm going to tell you what. Jimmy Nichols is going to go berserk on the sideline on this call. Oh, what a call. Clearly the kick was blocked and went off to the far sideline. And it was number 62, the defensive captain. I saw it clearly. Chris Truitt came bursting through. Oh, I don't understand. I don't believe this. Put it at the 13-yard line. So now McLean will hold from the 19, and it'll be a 29-yard attempt. And he takes a deep breath on the sideline. The head coach just live it. He wants a timeout. I don't know if they're going to get it. Confusion going on here. No time on the clock, and now they do get the timeout. They're allowed to have a timeout, even though there's no time on the clock, as they have some left. Surely the coach wants an explanation here. Jimmy Nichols, if we can see him on the sideline, is calling the officials over as they hadn't even picked up their flag yet. Let's see if we can look at the far sideline where Coach Jimmy Nichols is waving to the officials. We're looking at the Buell's bench right now, but here he now, he's getting the referee. We can follow him up there. If we don't see it right now, but on the far side of the field, Jimmy Nichols is having a conversation with the referee, Benny Bauman, and he wants to know what the call was there. Obviously, maybe someone else roughed the kicker besides the man who blocked it. There was a lot of people that came through there, but I thought the rule was that, that it was blocked, that you can't have roughing the kicker. Obviously, I'm wrong on that. And maybe another man roughed the kicker, and that's what the call was, but it was half the distance. And Buells is going to have a chance to win the region right here with no time left on the clock. Ken, take it away. Todd Harrison will snap. Snap, hold, kick. It is good. Robert McCarthy. It's a 29-yard field goal with no time to go. And the Buell's Bobcats have won 17 to 14. Unbelievable. same situation. It's a 14-14 game right now with less than a minute to go. Gainesville High and Jacksonville Lee. And we wish we could bring you the final score on that. But uh, right here, these two area teams, Buolts and Gainesville, paralleling each other at Citizens Field and Florida Field. And Buolts comes out a winner. And what an amazing victory it was between two evenly matched teams who laid it all on the line tonight. Robert McCarthy is going to keep that football for a while, I would suppose. Just an incredible ending to just a, what was a great football game. Again, I hate to harp on it, but it does close on what has to be a bit of a controversy. A blocked field goal, a ball which was clearly blocked by the defensive captain of Pensacola, Washington, number 62, Chris Truitt, and then a roughing the kicker penalty call, and not 
knowing exactly the interpretation or that the definition on that rule, it would have to be assumed that it was another player who ran into the kicker of McCarthy and gave them a half the distance of penalty. Tough way to lose a season, which had just really blossomed for that Pensacola Washington team after coming off two defeat to the opening start of the season, a new head coach. It came a long way, but things like this happen in the playoffs, Ken. Only one can advance. It's a shame, but Pensacola Washington has to go home brokenhearted. But for Buell, it's its new life, and on one more step towards the state championship. They'll take on the winner next week of the game between tonight between Jacksonville, Sandalwood, and Deland. So we're not sure as of yet what game we'll have for you next Friday, but we're pretty sure we'll have a game for you. So keep watching. We'll let you know as soon as we know. Again, feel for Washington, but really it was a, what I'd have to time, questionable decision on the offense. Once they threw that, that trick play incomplete, they ran two more passing plays with Gabe Buholtz the opportunity to get the ball back. We said anything could happen and anything did. They should have run the clock out once they didn't score on that long pass or at least get in position to score. And I think that was a poor decision and it cost them dearly. A shame, but that's the way it goes, Ken. It's a great game. Again, the final, you see it there. Buhold 17-14 over Washington. The Bobcats are Region 1 champions in Class 5A and will go on next week advancing in the playoffs. The executive producer of Cox Cable Lights High School Football Game of the Week is Art Marshall. For our, dir our director, Steve Shelton, and producer, Patrick Bryant, and all the folks at Cox Cable Lights that make it possible. For Bob Delessio, I'm Ken Tomash. We'll see you next week with some game. Believe me, keep tuned. We'll see you next week. <laughs>